In 2006, the Dreamgirls movie came out. So let's talk about that. That started in 2004. So mm. we started that movie. And I remember me and Harvey, we were talking about, we wanted to get into filming. People were asking us, because we were great producers, to get into it. And I said, we just got to choose a great movie. I don't want to do Friday. You know, you know, I don't want to do Soul Play, right? I need to do, I, if we do a movie, we got to, because at that point, we're hot, like, we, we're not, also, we're working on American Idol at that point. Clive Davis came to Harvey and I because we had a label deal with him. Um, so the underdogs had a label deal. And we, but Clive really just wanted us to work on everything that he had coming out on, on, on J Records, which was great. And he had American Idol. And he said, hey, guys, I got this show. It's going to be like the gong show, but there's going to be the music business and then there's going to be American Idol. And I didn't get it at the time. Harvey didn't get it at all at the time. But once that shit blew up, it was um, it was amazing, you know. Um, and we just followed his lead and we did Kelly Clarkson, I believe, was the first winner. Then we did Ruben Stuttered. So now you're in 2004. We did a song called Sorry 2004, written by um, the underdogs. That's the Eric Dawkins era. That's uh, Little Ronnie, who I started. Little Ronnie's a huge producer now here in Atlanta, but that was his first big song. So the underdogs are responsible for making a lot of producers successful and wealthy. And we'll get into those different names. But um, so... Um, we did the American Idol stuff. So that's going on at the same time. So back to Dream Girls. We're doing American Idol and we're doing Dream Girls at the same time. And we're doing Chris Brown's first album. All this is going on at the same time. So um, in Dream Girls, we did 61 songs. It was only supposed to be 20 something to begin with. So when you think of the movie, everything musical thing that you hear in the movie, we did. It wasn't like we just did the song, listen, everything you heard, we did it. We had, and it took 16 months. I remember when we started Dream Girls, Bill Condon, he was such a nice guy. You know, it was our first movie, and he was really patient. Because I thought to myself, we're going to do Dream Girls. This shit's from the 80s. It's old. We got to make it cool like Quincy Jones did The Wiz. You know, he made it cool sounding, right? I'm thinking, I'm a programmer. I got logic. I'm a program. I just started using logic at the time. I'm going to program this stuff and do all these cool things. He came in and with storyboards, bro. Like he brought these big storyboards into the studio and he lay, he was very quiet. He laid it out and we ended up doing everything live. There was no, there was no whole bunch. There was some sequencing. I did some pre-programming, but ultimately it was played live. And, and let's go back to, let's go back to my deal with Babyface. I knew all the big musicians because I did all this live stuff with Babyface. And had I not gone through that experience, had I not made the choice to take 75000 instead of taking 350000 I wouldn't have known Greg Fillingaines. I wouldn't have known Nathan East. I wouldn't have known all the great musicians that we use. Michael Thompson, Tim Carmen. I wouldn't have known. I knew Tim, but I wouldn't have known all these great musicians that we used on Dream Girls. Greg, F Greg Fillingaines is pound for pound, one of the best piano players in the world. He was Michael's MD. He was Babyface's MD. I think he played for Babyface at one point, and then he played for, he now plays for John Mayer. So, you know, when you have that caliber of musicians and you're doing live production for a movie, it makes such a huge difference. So that 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 knowledge that I gained from Babyface taught both Har Harvey and I how to get through the movie stuff, I believe. And um, we were able to do it at a high level. So when when you talk about the movie stuff, it, it wasn't a collective of all the other writers. It was really Harvey and I that worked on that stuff. And they came in as musicians and helped out with backgrounds. But the bulk of the work of that, that was, we both had to, we both took that on. It was a different responsibility than making records. It's a different process than making records. So we took that on. And that was a, that's one thing that I can say we did as um, producers, whether it's Jimmy and Terry, LA and Babyface, Damon and Harvey, whatever. We took on, um, the movie business and we did a great job of it and our choices with movies were great and again when you these are things that you did that, that this, this is a narrative that i want to put out about myself you know not just being a record producer but being a movie producer movie you know we did all the music for that movie it took 16 months and i remember talking to um, randy spinlove who's now i think he's the head of paramount and I think he got that job after doing Dream Girls because he was the music supervisor. He would say to us, hey, 10 months in, I'd be like, Randy, you said this was going to take three months. We are 50 songs in. He'd be like, DT, uh, 
this ain't Soul Plane, though. This is going to be the biggest movie, you know, one of the biggest things. And it was the best choice for us. We were, uh, we weren't paid a lot to do it, but we got money on the back end of it. So it was great. We ended up making up for that. But being able to go to, um, being able to be a part of something that won so many awards, we won a Critics' Choice Awards, it won Grammys, Oscars, all that stuff. So being a part of that was, it's a part of history. Um, so I think our second movie was, I want to know, Shrek the Third, and then we did Kung Fu Panda, then we did... Um, uh, Pitch Perfect later on. We'll, we'll get to that. So then there's Bobby. Bobby won a Grammy, which is one of ours, for um, Mary J. Blige and Aretha Franklin, the great Aretha Franklin. So when you say Whitney's the greatest singer, there again, it's like, how do you make that better? How do you make Whitney better <laughs> yeah. than Aretha Franklin? Or, you know, we work with we work with Elton John after Luther passed. We did that thing and he's on a song. We did a duet with Luther and Elton John. So our, you know, when you started out this thing, I think you should do that again because you've mentioned you went to the gangster stuff first. I'd rather you go with Elton John, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Beyonce. Give me that list first, you know. If I got to pick Chris Brown, you know. Right. And, you know, Dream Girls was, you know, nominated for a, a ton of Academy Awards. It actually won. Yeah. Well, so those Jennifer songs. Hudson won Best Supporting Actress, you know, which was a phenomenon considering that was her first acting role yeah, ever. Yeah, but three of the songs uh, we did were nominated at the same time. So that was the first year that, you know, any, that like in the music categories, the three songs from one movie made it to the Academy Awards. That's a huge deal on your first movie and you know for harvey and i that was that was big you know that's 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 a pretty big deal so um you know um i'm proud of it you know i think for me harvey's still doing movies he's done he's gone on to do a bunch of other big stuff i think that's what he kind of does now um when i make the, i'm making the choice to do the next movie i'll do that after we release our first thomas crown artist right and we have some success that I'm going to make the choice to, I want to do what Kenny did. That's Babyface. I want to do what he did with Waiting to Excel. I want to write um, songs for, I want to write the songs for uh, a movie. Um, and I opposed to just doing a bunch of remake songs for a movie. I want to be the, the songwriter opposed to producing other songs or other people's songs in the movie and all of that. That's, I think that's my next journey in doing the movie stuff. So. Um, 